The joint convention will return to order. The President recognizes Chief Sergeant at Arms John Preby. Thank you, Mr. President. The Governor of the great state of Michigan, the Honorable Gretchen Whitmer, and the first family await entrance to the joint convention. Will the special committee please escort the governor and her family to their seats in the rostrum? Members of the Joint Convention, the Governor of the Great State of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Michigan. The home of the best football in the country, am I right? From our national championship Wolverines to our Detroit Lions. I'm excited to be here tonight between two leaders who have gotten a lot done over the past year. My good friend, Speaker Joe Tate, and my good friend, Winnie Brinks, the Senate Majority Leader. Acknowledge Minority Leaders Matt Hall and Eric Nesbitt. Thank you for your leadership. And a happy early birthday to you, Senator Nesbitt. Tomorrow, I know. All right. We together delivered a balanced budget focused on the kitchen table issues in 2023, and I know we're going to do that again this year in 2024. And I want to acknowledge so many incredible partners that I have in governance. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. Our Attorney General Dana Nessel. And Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. And I always want to make a point of acknowledging two incredible public servants who lead groups of public servants who show up on the front line in the most dire times, 
please join me in thanking Major General Paul Rogers and Colonel James Grady from the State Police and National Guard. To our state employees, my cabinet, and my executive office team, thank you for your tireless efforts on behalf of the people of Michigan. All right, let's get this show on the road. Like some of you, I am a product of the 80s. I love big hair and bold leather jackets, classic movies, and of course, classic rock. And all great albums from the 80s have some things in common. Chart-topping hits that everyone loves. Deep cuts for the fans and a few experimental tracks. At their best, these are timeless records whose impact transcends a single year or artist. At our best, that's what we aspire to do too. Get things done that outlast us. Make policy for future generations. Over the past year, our record, like any great album, had something in it for everyone. And all of the tracks, or policies, were bound by a common theme, making a real difference in people's lives. We composed this record thanks to the people in this room and every Michigander at home. Groups only succeed when all its members are thriving. And lately, Michigan's been playing in harmony. So let's go through the set list. A lot of people had faith. We would roll back the retirement tax on our seniors. We got it done to save half a million senior households an average of $1,000 a year. We rolled back this tax, and I want to thank Representative Angela Whitwer for her leadership. <laughs> we quintupled the working families tax credit, so people working nine to five or second or third shift get hundreds more dollars back in their pockets. Let's acknowledge Senator Kristen McDonald Rivet for getting it done. <laughs> this year, the Senate and the House Democratic Legislative Majorities delivered a billion dollars in tax relief. This year, seniors will keep more of what they earned, and hundreds of thousands of working families will get refund checks, putting money back in their pockets to help with groceries or gas or home repairs. We all know that girls just want to have fun and pay down debt, so we did. Since I took office, we have paid down $18 billion of state debt. We brought our rainy day fund to an all-time high of nearly $2 billion. We've even created a new rainy day fund for our schools and put nearly $500 million into it. We are making great strides, and we won't back down in our fight to protect reproductive freedom. Michiganders passed Prop 3 to protect abortion rights and repealed our extreme 1931 abortion ban thanks to the hard work of so many in this room, including Representative Pahutsky and Senator Geis. And for every sweet child of ours in Michigan, we have made school, lunch and breakfast free of charge for every Michigan child. All 
1.4 million Michigan public school students get two meals a day so they can focus on learning and so their parents can save 850 bucks a year on groceries per student. I want to thank Senator Darren Camilleri and Representative Regina Weiss who led this effort. When I introduce my next budget, we're going to keep feeding students and lowering grocery bills for families. We also put cost-saving pieces of the Affordable Care Act into state law. You might be wondering, what's cost got to do, got to do with it? <laughs> now young people can stay on their parents' insurance until they turn 26, and you can't be charged more for having a pre-existing condition. Because no one should be running up that bill to get better when they're sick. Okay. Okay, a little more coffee before the next day of this day. While some folks in Washington are trying to repeal the ACA and strip health care away for kids and seniors and working families, we got your back like a rock here in Michigan. We will protect your care no matter what. I want to thank Representative Matt Colazar and Senator Kevin Hertel for their work on this issue. <laughs> While other states restrict your freedom to be who you are and love who you love, we heed the words of Ms. Diana Ross and say, we're coming out to protect equal rights for the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Moss, and of course, Representative Hoskin for your work on this. We also ended natural hair discrimination by passing the Crown Act. Thank you, Senator Anthony. <laughs> and finally, to protect every breath you take and our Great Lakes, we enacted historic clean energy package. Together, we will reach 100% clean energy by 24. 20, I'm sorry, 2040, lower the cost of household utilities by an average of 145 bucks a year and create thousands of good paying jobs backed by the strongest labor standards in the country. We will make more energy here with American workers. So I want to thank Senators Singh, Geis, Schenck, and Representatives Ayash, Puri, and Kafia for making Michigan a national leader on climate action. So we have a heck of a record, and we are starting 2024 fired up. My fellow Michiganders, the state of our state is ready to rock. We got into the groove last year, but great bands do not rest on their laurels. They make the next record better than the last one. There's more to do, and nothing is going to stop us now. Let's talk about the challenges Michiganders face today. Top of mind is costs. It is hard to buy a house, afford a car, or save for retirement while keeping up with the bills. People put things off to make ends meet, replacing old tires, fixing busted gutters, 
buying your child a warmer coat. No matter who you are or where you come from, if you work hard, you should be able to provide for your family and have a fair shot at a better future. We should have the freedom to live the way that you want. That is the American dream. And you should be able to chase that in Michigan. At our best, that's what we are, a home for opportunity, for people seeking a good life and a good cost of living. Tonight, that's what I'm gonna focus on, how we keep lowering costs, how we improve education to set up our children for success, make more stuff right here in Michigan and compete with the world. So first, costs. No one likes paying six bucks for a box of cereal or more for an oil change than they did last year. But I wanna be upfront with you. I cannot solve global inflation alone. No one person can, not even a president. If you meet someone who says they have a secret plan to fix inflation, run the other way. But what we can do is make life more affordable by lowering costs on the biggest items in your monthly budget. When your paycheck hits your bank account, you know your largest and most important expenses are gonna be housing and childcare, transportation, education, utilities, and food. From axing the retirement tax and free school meals to the Michigan Achievement Scholarship and Reconnect, which lower the cost of college by thousands, to programs like TriShare that slash the cost of childcare by 66%, we are taking action. Things are headed in the right direction. Inflation is slowing down. Unemployment remains low. And take-home pay is up. It is a great time to find a good-paying job, with unions fighting successfully for better pay and benefits. President Biden's policies are bringing jobs and supply chains home to Michigan from around the world. Still, yes. Still, Michiganders need more breathing room. This year, we will continue our work to lower costs on the biggest items in your budget. So let's jump in. A few weeks ago, I rolled out the Michigan Vehicle Rebate, a plan to lower the cost of buying a new car with a $1,000 rebate off any car and $2,000 for electric vehicles. If it was assembled by a union, you get an extra $500, bucks, so that's up to $2,500 off. The My Vehicle Rebate would be offered at the point of sale. So you actually save money as you walk out of the dealership. Michigan's auto industry has been the backbone of our economy for a century, powered by the men and women of the UAW who negotiated and ratified a record contract last year. We want our auto workers and our auto industry to thrive right here in Michigan. And I know that unites us. So let's help them both do what they do best, make the world's best cars and trucks. With the My Vehicle rebate, we can lower costs and support the ongoing transition to an all-electric union-made future. Next, housing, usually the largest expense in anyone's budget. Right now, too many families spend more than half their income on their rent or mortgage. Our housing stock is old. Nearly half of all units in Michigan were built before 1970. Young people cite housing affordability as one of their top concerns. These are statewide challenges. In Traverse City, school districts need housing for teachers who have nowhere else to live. On the west side and in the UP, there just aren't enough homes for growing families. And I know Detroiters see higher rates when they re-sign. In other words, the rent is too damn high and we don't have enough damn housing. So our response is simple. Build, baby, build. Let's go.
Our target is clear. In Michigan's first ever statewide housing plan that I commissioned last year, we set a goal of 75,000 new or refurbished units in five years, and we are headed in the right direction. In the five years since I took office, we've invested double what we did the previous eight years to build or rehabilitate 34,000 housing units, supporting 20,000 good paying construction jobs in the process. Our local partners are getting it done too. From November 2022 to November 2023, our four largest counties, Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, and Kent, permitted over 8,000 units. In 2024, let's keep going. 2024, let's build more of every kind of housing, single family homes, apartments, mixed use buildings. In 2024, we will make the largest investment to build housing in Michigan history. Let's get it done. We will invest almost $1.4 billion to build or rehabilitate nearly 10,000 homes. That's 10 times what we put into housing just 10 years ago. Getting this done will support thousands of good paying middle class jobs in the skilled trades from pipe fitters and carpenters to bricklayers and roofers. Let's get it done. Housing is a serious challenge, so we're making this serious investment. It's about so much more than just a roof over your head. Housing builds generational wealth. It forms the foundation for success in school, in work, in life. Let's work together to build more housing so every Michigander has an affordable place to call home. Finally, I'm calling for a new caregiver tax credit that'll put money in the pockets of Michiganders who care for an aging or sick relative. I know how tiring caregiving can be, especially when you're juggling a career and kids of your own. When I was sandwiched between my newborn daughter and my mom who was dying from brain cancer, I was pushed to my limit despite having resources and help. I know a lot of people are concerned about how much it'll take or is taking to care for aging parents financially and emotionally. Maybe you're concerned about how your kids would take care of you while living their own lives. The new Caring for My Family tax credit could save thousands of Michigan families up to $5,000 on their taxes. people to write off caregiving expenses, including counseling or transportation, nursing or respite services, we can save them money. We can help more seniors age in place at home in dignity instead of a costly or long-term option. We can support parents of children with long-term care needs by saving them money. We know the burden of caregiving falls disproportionately on women and especially women of color. While the caregiving work they do is often invisible, it is invaluable. According to the AARP, family members provide about $522 billion in uncompensated care every year. Let's support them by giving them a tax break so that they can take care of their loved ones. Now let's talk about education. This is a priority all parents share. Whether you're in a small town or a big city, a Republican, Democrat, or independent, getting ahead or just getting by, you want your child to succeed. I'm proud of the record bipartisan investments we've made since I took office. Republicans and Democrats came together to raise per pupil funding by 22% in the last five years. That's hundreds more for every child invested directly into your local school district to lower class sizes and upgrade shop classrooms or computer labs. We also invested in campus safety and mental health and made breakfast and lunch free. When kids are unsafe or struggling or starving, they can't reach their full potential. 
every parent knows that the person standing in the front of the classroom matters. In some states, educators are being undermined, micromanaged, and even criminalized just for doing their jobs. In Florida, teachers are disrespected and book bans are rampant. Heck, just two weeks ago, a district banned the dictionary. The dictionary. In Texas, nearly one in three teachers aren't even certified. That's not how you improve education. In Michigan, we're forging a different path. We're sending a message, loud and clear. We support our teachers. We walk the walk. We fund scholarships for future educators, pay student teachers, and help full-time teachers with their student loans so they stay in Michigan. We accept out-of-state certificates, so if you have experience, you can enter the classroom without jumping through bureaucratic hoops. As a result, enrollment rates in Michigan's teacher prep programs are beating other states. So a message to America's teachers, if you want to teach, we want you here. In Michigan, we let teachers do what they do best, teach. We know education in Michigan needs more support and more work, and we want student outcomes to exceed our expectations. We need to better prepare students for success after they graduate, whether they go right into the workforce or enter community college, trade school, or a four-year university. There is no correct path but every person deserves a path. It depends on the person what theirs is. What we can do is get everyone ready. A big part of that is starting education earlier and continuing later. Four-year-olds who go to pre-K arrive at kindergarten better prepared to learn. They're more likely to graduate, go to college, and earn more over their lifetime. And we know higher education or skills training leads to higher incomes. If you get an associate's degree, you can earn $23,000 more a year. The best paying jobs today and in our future economy require some education after high school. So we must support our kids from pre-K through post-secondary to prosperity. Last year I proposed pre-K for all by the end of 2026, saving families about $10,000 a year and giving every child a solid academic foundation. Together, we're changing our definition of education to include pre-K. And last year, we expanded pre-K to 5,600 more students. And you know what? This year, we're going to go a heck of a lot further. In our next budget, let's deliver pre-K for every single four-year-old in Michigan two years ahead of schedule. When we get this done, no matter who you are or where you come from or how much you make, your child can enroll in pre-K and be set up for success. So let this be a message to parents in other states. Come to Michigan. We got your back every step of the way and we'll save you 10 grand on your children's education. We need to be a state of lifelong learners, and we know that education does not end after high school graduation. And that's why we've lowered the cost of college with the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, saving thousands.
We made community college and job training for medical techs and electricians, tuition free for anyone 21 and older with the Michigan Reconnect, and today I propose we go further. In our next budget, let's make the first two years of community college in Michigan tuition free for every high school graduate. As Michiganders pursue an associate's degree or a skills certificate at a community college, they can save an average of $4,000 on tuition. This is a transformational opportunity for graduating seniors and will help us achieve our 60 by 30 goal, having 60% of our adult population with post-secondary skills training or a degree by 2030. We are broadening our vision of education beyond K through 12. Every single Michigander should be able to count on a free public education from pre-K through community college. That's the Michigan guarantee. Let's get it done. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about making it in Michigan. Over the last few years, we have seen a manufacturing renaissance driven by President Biden's investments in American workers and industry. It is happening nationwide with 800,000 manufacturing jobs added since 2021. Companies are investing in America and especially in Michigan in a big way. We're competing and winning the future of the auto industry, making cars and semiconductors and batteries here instead of China. You may have heard about expansions by the big three in Detroit, Lansing, and Flint, but there are so many businesses from other states and nations expanding or moving to Michigan. Calumet Electronics in the Keweenaw Peninsula, Nell Hydrogen's Gigafactory in Plymouth Charter Township, Scout Motors R&D Hub in Novi, Fortescue's Battery Plant in Detroit, Hydro Aluminum Recycling Facility in Cassopolis, Michigan, and SK Siltron, semiconductor wafer plant in Bay City. We are showing the world that we make a lot more than just cars. In the decades ahead, we will dominate manufacturing of batteries and chips and clean energy too. To keep winning, we must upgrade our economic development toolkit. We can and must outcompete our neighbors. Tonight, I wanna to talk about some new tools. We know Michigan is home to a lot of research and development, or R&D thanks to our leading universities and businesses. Unfortunately, we are one of just a handful of states without a tax credit to incentivize R&D. Every other Midwestern state has one. An R&D tax credit will unleash innovation while lowering costs for businesses. Let's get it done. Our current toolkit limits our ability to attract small and second stage businesses. So let's start the Higher Michigan Fund to lower overall payroll taxes for these firms. The value here is simple. The more you hire in Michigan, the more you should save in Michigan. We had a similar bipartisan program years ago that worked well. Let's bring it back because, well, everyone loves a throwback, right? We also, thank you. <laughs> We also need to uplift regions that have too often been left out or left behind. Renaissance zones are strategically selected areas that with lower taxes for businesses and entrepreneurs so we can drive investment and create local jobs. We already have several of these statewide, but there are strict categories that define them um, and eligible projects within them are so tightly defined. Let's simplify these into a single flexible category to incentivize growth in Michigan. And finally, let's establish an innovation fund to invest in high growth startups that will create the future right here in Michigan. Right now, we have no state level mechanism to attract and retain promising young companies. With the new innovation fund, we can launch hundreds 
of new Michigan-based startups and create thousands of jobs. Together, we're gonna to build the infrastructure for innovation so founders can start and build their companies right here in Michigan. As we win all these projects, our infrastructure's gotta keep up. The Growing Michigan Together Council identified infrastructure as one of the keys to growing our population. That's why we are fixing the dam roads and bridges and pipes and everything in between. Since I took office, we have fixed 20,000 lane miles of road and 1,400 bridges, supporting 118,000 good paying jobs. I know you saw it last year. Our state flower, the orange barrel, was in full bloom. <laughs> and the hardworking men and women who fix our roads were out in force getting the job done. Four years ago, I stood at this rostrum and rolled out the Rebuilding Michigan Plan, a $3.5 billion investment to fix our roads while supporting over 45,000 jobs without raising taxes by a dime. It focused on vital economic corridors, including 96 and 275 in Metro Detroit, the 475-69 interchange in Flint, 94 in Jackson, 196 between Holland and Saugatuck, and 496, just a few blocks from here. We made progress on them all. Tonight, I'm calling on the Michigan Department of Transportation to authorize the final $700 million of the Rebuilding Michigan Plan. The final round of projects includes 94 along Metro Airport in Detroit, 696 from Southfield through Warren, and a bridge in Erie Township. The Rebuilding Michigan Plan is making commutes safer, saving drivers time and money, and allowing businesses to ship project products more easily across Michigan. Let's keep fixing those damn roads. Every Michigander deserves a classic Michigan story. You work hard, follow your dreams, and build a great life. When you get knocked down, you get up again. You keep fighting. That's what makes us special. Heck, just look at our lions. Once a, yeah. Once a punchline are now a powerhouse they've dominated by centering the grit that defines every Michigander. On the way up, they turned naysayers and cynics into dreamers. And I don't know if you recall, but our Wolverines are national champions, right? <laughs> I'm looking at my fellow Spartans, I know it's hard sometimes. <laughs> but both these incredible teams, both these incredible teams are showing the country what Michigan is all about. That story, our story, can be seen in our people's stories. Tonight I want to tell you one about a woman named Elaine. Elaine is here with us today. Elaine, if you wouldn't mind standing. She's right there. Elaine was born in Saginaw in the wake of World War II. She was one of seven kids and grew up poor. After graduating from Saginaw High School, she worked odd jobs and got married and moved to Chicago. After her divorce, she came home to Michigan with her sons. She struggled as a single mom. One day over dinner in the parking lot of a fast food joint, 
she made her sons a promise. One day, she said, they would be able to eat at the Olive Garden across the street, a sit-down restaurant with metal forks and waiters who refill your glass without you even asking. Elaine worked hard, using food stamps to put groceries in the fridge and housing assistance to keep a roof over her son's head. She was a secretary for years, but wanted to chase her dream and get a job that gave her a sense of purpose. She never thought she could do it. Well, Elaine, I'm glad you proved yourself wrong. She went back to Wayne State with a Pell Grant and earned two degrees. After graduating with her master's in social work at 45, she had a successful career in Saginaw. In retirement, she volunteers at local shelters and even wrote a book, My Grandchildren Make Me Laugh, and I am the proud owner of a signed copy. What Elaine is most proud of, however, is who her sons have become. She calls them fine young men who care for themselves and their families. Mark and Cody are with her today. One works at the same clinic Elaine did, and the other heads back to college soon, following in her footsteps. Elaine and my mom were born about six years apart. They both worked hard and faced adversity and persevered. They're both strong, proud women from Michigan, and that's a badge of honor. Elaine's story is Michigan's story. She had simple dreams for her kids. She wanted them to get a great education and eat at a restaurant occasionally. She wanted them to have hope and be good people. Tonight's proposals that we are focused on are so that we can make more stories like Elaine's possible here in Michigan. We'll build a Michigan where if you get knocked down, you have the support you need to get back up lowering costs on the biggest items in your budget, improving education so your kids can thrive, and ensuring you can make it no matter who you are or what you've been through. We will deliver real change for people right now and for Michiganders for generations to come. That's what our work is about, getting things done for people we've never met, people like Elaine, a mom who can afford a nicer place to live in a new housing that we are building someone who can get their associate's degree tuition-free with the Michigan ReConnect, making more time to study in the mornings because our parents don't have to pack a lunch for their kids, being able to drive them to school on safe roads where they know that they will be taught by a skilled educator and receive a public education from pre-K through community college. We are a state of humble, that's, hey, go at it. We are a state of humble, hardworking people with big dreams for our children. This year, let's keep rocking so everyone can have their own classic Michigan story. I thank you all for your time tonight. I thank you for the hard work that you do every single day. I encourage you to drive safe, root for the Lions, and have a good night. Let's go.